Well, no, back to predestination yeah. and all that good stuff. Yeah. I don't think that you or I are predestined to take advantage of that blessing if there is one. It's still up to us. Oh, I couldn't agree more with that. Um, <coughs> that may but be it's the. Not, it's not like Paul being predestined to be who he was. This is something which is plenary. It's there. You know enough, smart enough to take advantage of it. Right. I, I'm I, very, very late to take advantage of it, if, if that's what it is, Steve. I think that it is, that's, that's right. It, it's there right in front of us all the time. It's just either we come to a point where we can see it, but it's not enough just to see it. We actually have to stand up and embrace it. We have to actually do something. Yeah. So it doesn't yeah. just come to you. It's there. But you have to go to it. It, it. Now, sometimes by whatever divine intervention, it could be granted to you by grace or whatever. But mm -hmm. for the most part, 99.9% .9 of the time, no, you actually got to stand up, step forward, and embrace it. <laughs> yes. If, if there is a blessing, then yes. I yeah. think that's that kind of one. It's not a um, unavoidable one. Right, yeah, it's not a predestined one. So, Steve, if I can tell you the number of times I have been delivered from bad things, it's not because of I was righteous or good or anything. It just wasn't permitted to go that way. Well, there there might be that um, uh, that sense of guidance where um, I don't know. It's not like something on the outside, but maybe something on the inside, like a gyroscope, a gyroscopic guidance system. Yeah. I and, had some experiences <laughs> like that. Not tonight, though. Yeah. Yeah. You, uh, you wrote me that, um, sent me that article on uh, Chileism. Oh, yeah. my glory, Steve. Oh. Oh man! Oh yeah, back. All right, let's go back to the year one hundred. Yeah. Okay. Okay. To me, I see as this little baby is born, the Christian Church, all Jews, you know. Once in a while, I could slip that in with Mark and Toby and Nancy, but I didn't. Hopefully, didn't push it too much. But anyway, definitely nothing but Jews. And they had all things in common, and they took care of everything, and everything was going good. And then persecution. It's very clear that they lost some few, too. So, you know, this is too rugged for me, uh, sayonara. Oh, yeah. Then if you jump through what's in the New Testament to, to the book of Revelation, wow. You know what? gets me, Steve, about those seven churches in Revelation, there is nothing about evangelism. I mean, Steve, I was brought up in what we call an evangelical church. It wasn't extreme. I was just mainstream evangelical. Okay? Emphasis on missions, trying to convert people. Billy Graham, meetings, Jack Woodson, Word of Life. I could go on and on and on. <sighs> Buttonholing people. You understand what I'm getting at? Yep. And there are ways of doing it. Some people apparently do it successfully. I don't. I mean, I don't know how. I never have had that knack. When you come to the seven churches of Revelation, there's no mention of that. The whole thing is clean your house and hang in there. You get you get what I'm trying to say? The idea of going out and converting the world, it's not in there. There's nothing in those seven churches about preaching the gospel all over the earth. It's as though, okay, here I go. It's as though whatever is good in Christianity has been compressed and compressed and compressed and compressed. And then the message, you have to read the message for yourself. Something was going to happen very shortly after those letters were written, and none of us who study this stuff understand what happened. But a few years later, 
the Christian church is no longer recognizable, in my opinion. It's all bishops and priests. Steve, yeah. according to the Old Testament, the believers were to become priests. The first verses of Revelation, he has made us to be a kingdom and priests, all of them. And the next thing you know, all there is is bishops, priests, and a whole big pro proletariat who, you know, are um, cannon fodder, you might say. Yes. It, and it gets worse and worse and worse. And then right. you get down to the time of Julian and Augustine and so forth, and it's all solidified finally. And I don't know, Steve, I'm not, you know, I've just dabbled in this. But I just don't see the true Christian church any longer until, well, I saw the true Christian church in the early Quakers. Yes, I did. You mean in the, satisfying. In the 1600s? Beginning around 16, late 1640s. Okay, you can tie this to events. Charles I was decapitated about 1649. Charles II came in after Cromwell, 1659. So there's a 10-year period. Whatever the early religious society of friends was supposed to be, it was, and it was exploding, even internationally, in that time frame. And then by the end of the 1600s, the same thing has happened, somewhat similar to what happened to the Christian church, really. Right. This is my view, Steve. If you want to really get what, a modern Quaker irritated, ask him what he knows about, quote, the old Foxian Quakers. You say, what? What are you talking about? And then he'll go get a hold of somebody, and finally they'll tell him, oh, we don't know about that. Right. Well, I, to me, Steve, the, that's one of the reasons I'm talking to you, because there's some things that happened to me in, in reading about them and, and the group that I was in, that, that group didn't continue. I didn't continue with it, but they were sweet people. I don't have anything against them. But as far as I'm concerned, it happened again, at least then in the 1600s. And they're pacifists, Steve. They don't want killing people. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. They won't. And they were persecuted unbelievably, Steve. Oh man. Oh right. Well that's you can't be uh you can't be doing that. You can't you have to be part of the program. No. You're not part of the program, I mean, we're they, gonna uh, they look, they just cut the king's head off. They're they're after anybody that will do little that go against the power. And they see all these people they won't go to church, they won't do this, they won't do that. And they're afraid they'll get together and take over the government, right? Right. So they throw them all in jail, and there wasn't any chance of that. But you know, the same thing happened all over. Right. See, I jumped. I jumped from the year 100 to 1620s. I'm sorry, but it was on my mind. Couldn't help it. Well, no, especially where if that's where it appears again, um, it doesn't matter how many years are in between when it happened. It is what it is. If it's six, you know, 1500 years. Now, who knows? I, I know that I studied something about the Cathars back in the, okay. this would be in the 5th, 6th, 7th century, somewhere in there. I think they lasted for a couple hundred years. Well, they lasted up until the Inquisition of the 11, 1200s or so. Right, and that's, it was the same kind of thing. Um, they were uh, hunted, persecuted, ridiculed, um, marginalized yeah. and demonized, burned, burned right? <laughs> and then with the Inquisition, they finally they just killed them off. Yeah. Um, I, I don't. I'm not saying that this is a, another incident of where the original church reared its head or was able to get above water again, but it's the same kind of persecution complex to anything other than the standard dogmatic belief system that's being enforced. Um, that's the pattern of history over and over, I mean from the very beginning. And 